Today on the channel, I wanna talk about a topic that is intimidating to both beginners and pro photographers, and that is shooting in full manual. But I'm gonna tell you why you should do it anyways. So let's gear up and let's get started. Hey there, what is up you guys? I am Jerry Lai and welcome back to my sports photography channel. For those of you joining me for the first time, I am the Director of Content and Photography at USA Today Sports and I have been fortunate enough to be in the industry for 16 years. My goal for this channel is to help you become a better sports photographer. If you think that I could help you out, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing. Today, I want to help begin to wean you off of those automatic modes on your camera and discuss a couple of reasons why you should learn to shoot in full manual mode. Again, I know that this is a difficult sounding and intimidating task to learn, but it is a skill that you're going to want to master if you want to level up in the sports photography world. Because ultimately, doing so will allow you to get consistent exposures as well as significantly drive up your keeper rate. Now, before I really drill down on this topic, there is one thing I really need to clarify, and that is just because you can shoot in full manual mode doesn't mean that you will always be shooting in full manual mode. There are definitely a few situations where it may be beneficial or simply easier to shoot in automatic modes. You need to understand that there is a big difference between not shooting in manual modes because it won't make a difference in your photography in certain situations, versus not shooting in manual modes because you don't know how to. It's a bit of a subtle difference and I'll circle back to this topic a little bit later in the video. So all that said, let's begin by explaining a few scenarios as to why you should be shooting in full manual mode. Like I've said repeatedly in many of my videos, cameras are just tools to do our jobs. Cameras have gotten extremely advanced these days and inside of these cameras are computers that can rapidly calculate exposures and generally they do a pretty decent job at it. However, you can't fully trust them. They are limited by their programming and as humans, we are smarter and more adaptable than they are. So sometimes we simply have to override them in order to get better results. There are two primary scenarios that I can think of where you absolutely should be shooting in manual and I'll tell you exactly why. This is the way. The first scenario where you should be shooting in full manual mode is if you are under consistent lighting. Most frequently, this will occur when you're shooting inside under artificial lighting or outdoors under a gray, fully cloudy sky. Think about it. If you're shooting under stadium lights or on a day where it's dull and gray, there's no reason to shoot in automatic mode because no matter which direction you point your camera, the exposure on the field should be roughly the same. Sure, of course, so in many stadiums there are darker or lighter spots, particularly in the corners, but there really is a simple solution around this, and that is do some light measurements or test exposures before the game and see if there's any difference in any spots along the field. Then simply dial in the slight differences as the plays move around the field in these lighter or darker spots. So using my personal photography experiences as an example, I know that when shooting baseball at Wrigley Field at night, I have to brighten my exposures by about one third of a stop when I'm pointed towards the plate or in the outfield. So let's say my default settings at Wrigley is 1 hundredth of a second at F4 at 5000 ISO. This covers me anytime I'm photographing the pitcher or action on the bases. But when I'm turned towards the plate, I know to just manually click the shutter speed over, giving me settings of 1 1250th of a second. Then I shift the exposure back by one third of a stop when a fielder grabs the ball in the infield. It really is no big deal, and with a little bit of practice and repetition, it all becomes second nature. So why don't I just simplify and just shoot in automatic mode? Well, that's because like the Mandalorian, I don't fully trust the computer or droids in my camera. I'm smarter than they are. If you left it up to your camera to decide on your exposure in these situations by shooting in one of your automatic modes, you can have wild fluctuations in your exposure from frame to frame. 
These fluctuations in your exposure can be caused by a number of factors, from the color of jersey that the players are wearing, to what the fans are wearing in the background, to the umpires getting in the frame, and even to the advertisement boards lined around the stadium. All of these things can throw off your camera's automatic exposure calculations. Now, I'm gonna use some hockey photos that I took as an example, but you'll see these color shifts ahead can happen in any sport. Check out this shot. Suppose you have a photo where players fall to the ice. Well, all that ice is gonna make your camera think that you are shooting a very bright frame and thus will calculate a dark exposure in automatic modes. Now, on the other hand, if you have a celebration that catches a big part of the fans in the stands, the camera is gonna think you are shooting in a dark environment and overcompensate and blow out your photo. You can avoid this automatic overcompensation by shooting in manual. So again, when you are under more or less even lighting conditions that you see in indoor stadiums or under artificial lights at night, one of the first things you should do is figure out your exposure on the majority of the field and lock your settings into that. Then if you discover any hot or dark spots, you can see how many clicks it takes to properly expose those spots and adjust on the fly. Now let's talk about a second scenario where shooting in full manual mode is more reliable than shooting in automatic. A second scenario where you would be shooting in full manual mode is when you are trying to be creative and you're trying to work shadows and light pockets into your photos. One thing you've seen in my past videos is I really love chasing these light pockets. You've seen me share these examples over and over in other videos and now I'll begin to explain how I managed to make these dramatic photos. If you allow your camera to try to automatically calculate this exposure, you'll almost always end up with an extremely bright and blown out photo. This is because in automatic modes, the camera will try to compensate for all the shadows in your frame. And when the player finally gets illuminated by the sun, they get completely washed out. So in this case, you wanna manually dial in your exposure for the sun so that the subject is perfectly lit when the action finally flows into your pocket of light. So those are the two big scenarios that come to mind in which shooting manual is a must. But Jerry, didn't you say that there are actually times where you shoot in automatic? Yes, there are. And I do this primarily when I'm under extremely variable light, as in I cannot predict if a scene is going to stay very bright or very dark or even. You'll commonly see this during afternoon games when there are dramatic shadows across the field, like you see in this overhead shot. Any plays in the outfield at this time of day is probably at least a full three stops brighter than the plays under the stands. Now, remember how I said under the lights, it's really not a big deal to move your camera over one or two clicks to compensate for these light and dark spots? Well, try spinning that wheel 10 to 12 clicks and trying to have that land in the right spot. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen. So in these cases, I'm just gonna settle and shoot in one of the automatic modes anyways. But if I'm being honest, it doesn't do a great job of it because as you'll see in the sun, it's still a little bit too bright and in the shadows, my photos come out a little bit too dark, but at least gets the exposures roughly close enough to where I could rescue these photos in post. I'll also shoot this way on an automatic mode when the sun is constantly coming in and out of the clouds on a partly cloudy day so that I'm not constantly fiddling with my dials. I will also often shoot in auto before a game when I'm in a new stadium or venue so that I could get the approximate settings of what I need to lock in and shoot manually. Then I'll tweak and check the exposures in the back of my camera until I have dialed in my settings correctly. So anyways, like I touched on in the beginning of my video, just because I primarily shoot in manual mode doesn't mean I always shoot in manual mode. There are indeed times where it is beneficial to shoot on auto, but like I said, I'm not doing it because I don't know how to dial in my settings manually. I'm doing it because I thoroughly understand all of the settings and functions of my camera to know when is the appropriate time to dial in each mode. So anyways, that will wrap up today's video as to why you should learn how to shoot in full manual mode. I know it may sound difficult at first, and it will certainly take a little bit of practice, 
But once you master dialing in your exposures manually, I think that you will find that you will have overall better results, more consistent exposures, and thus have a much, much, much higher keeper rate. You'll also open yourself up to the possibility of making stunningly creative photos by working light pockets and shadows into your photos. Anyways, let me know in the comments section below if you currently shoot in manual mode or if this is the video that finally gives you that kick in the rear to try it out. Thank you very much as always for watching. As always, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing. Today I explained why you should shoot in manual mode. Next time I'll be showing you how to shoot in manual mode and the specific settings that I use. So if you don't want to miss out, also ring that notification bell so that you can be alerted as to when that video drops. Thank you very much as always for watching today. Stay safe and I'll see you all again next time. Bye now.